I think it's very important that this issue be continue to be raised and elevated and morally one additional case of child leukemia is not acceptable. That's what I said to the Regardless government. of whether it gained exposure when the child was at school or at home or church or wherever. I said that to the governor. I said we don't want one case of leukemia. That's right. And you know, if you look at leukemia, eighty percent of the leukemic children uh, with modern medicine improve and do relatively well for five years. But so what? We don't want one extra case. Exactly. Not exactly. And so I think, you know, if those who are parents here or children or who one strategy of, of the children, the youngsters writing their letters to Dr. Susan Lynch, which is, and I've got, you know, we're going to ramp this up uh, because we'll be trading, we're, we're very professional uh, with the groups we're coming up against. But the governor's not paying really any heat. And what I've done is for, uh, here is I've got a list of all the senators. The senators, every senator, now we had with the eminent domain, I mean we have a lot of issues here. Eminent domain is obviously crucial and extraordinarily important. I think it was 14 to, was it 16 to 8? 14, 14 to 10. 10. 14 to 10. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going into it, Jeff Bradley's territory, um, and I'm going to uh, that down to Wolfboro. He came, he is uh, paid by the utilities. He was just, he had given money for his war chest. Oh. Uh, um, there are a lot, we're finding a lot of this going on, a lot of corruption. Uh, we don't know what the governor's getting out of this. We know that his best friend is Gary Long, who uh, is head of PSNH, which is a very dubious company, been in bankruptcy. Um, the head of the, U the chief CEO of the union leader is a friend of the governor's. I've got a lot of contact numbers here, um, but I think what we're getting to, and what I feel as I go around talking, doing this PowerPoint, is we've got to show up. It's not just saying, yes, it's bad. Oh, this is, a, this is not. We've got to do something. Each one of us has to do something. You know, whether we talk to two people, four people, and find it and give them the list and say, right, and it's right. It's telephone. And maybe our young youngsters just writing letters to and say, Dr. Lynch, why are you putting me at risk? You know, we wouldn't just get at them. And I think uh, we require to, we we have to ramp it up. The governor has said very clearly he's going to listen to people. Just to comment on that, the governor also put a letter in my mailbox yeah. <clears throat> that said he cannot stop the presidential process, this, this uh, uh, approval process. The governor said that? The governor, it's in all, it's in all our letters, at least up north. It's, uh, I wish I would have brought it because it was <clears throat> kind of it was that very annoying <laughs> to, to read what he had to, had when to say. That? When was that? Uh, well, last week. Last week yeah. Well, I have one of those pamphlets. Yeah. It sort of says that while he will listen to the people and while he sees that there is concern, it says something like the governor alone does not make the regulation or does not yeah. influence it. He does have a, a, a part, a role to play. He had a role to play when they, <coughs> when they handed this thing out to the public back three weeks before his election, who I also voted for. Well, we need that. That's going to get sued. Uh, Campbell, there was an uh, reported on NPR yesterday, New Hampshire Public Radio, that Lynch had made an announcement that he was asking uh, public service to take another look at the route that they were going through. Now, I happened to be in Concord at the time, so I ran down to the, the governor's office and said, tell me more about this. And supposedly the press secretary knew nothing about that and knew nothing about when it came out. I asked if it came out in the Franconia profile thing. No, he'd been in Berlin at the time. So another friend went down this morning and happened to have a meeting with the committee with the governor. He is saying that he is looking at other alternatives. Now the question comes up whether that means does it go through Sugar Hill or does it go through Franconia or does it go through I, you know no, Plymouth. But that that really is not what they're looking at. He's asking them to look at what's going on in Vermont. 
He's asking them to look at what's going on in Maine. I think if we write letters, we need to say to the governor, thank you for listening to people, and please let's look at alternatives. Um, there isn't anyone that's going to be able to say, no, we don't ever need electricity. But you and I, have, if we've been to the scoping sessions, we know that there are other ways to bring electricity down. We know that. We, we know this is old technology. So we need to encourage them to look at that and spend more money to, to do that. But I think, and this is just an I think, we're starting to be heard. Let's not stop. Let's not stop now. Let's make sure that we continue the pressure, make sure that we continue that, and follow what's going on in the newspaper and the radio. Because that's the only way we've got. They've, got. they've got television ads, they've got lobbyists, they've got full newspaper ads, they've got more lobbyists, they've got money to burn. And we don't. We just have our voices. So we'll go to wrap it up. I agree with this one. There was a news story in the car on the way over here by Chris Jensen. That there was yes. an announcement today about they are reconsidering the route north of Groton, I think is what It's the unincorporated areas, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. that's just a And know, they're extending the comment screen. period, which means the decision <laughs> is being pushed back. Yeah, they have extended the comment period. Who has? DOE? They don't know yet. So it's still open there? So it's still open for comments on the IS. And if you look at ISO New England, which is the independent uh, operators, when you look at the future maps, we're getting crisscrossed. <coughs> this is a New Hampshire problem, it's not a, a, a state problem. What's going to happen in the future, 2015, 2020, we have to make a stand now and we have to set it. Because we're going to roll over. So we have to wrap this up. Live free or fry. Get onto the websites. Bury Road the Pass is uh, more local. Live free or fry is north. Uh, we have YouTube. We have trips down the, uh, the route um, with a pseudo helicopter stopping down, seeing what's going to happen to the view. Um, we've got the songs. But the blog, uh, Susan Shipanoff, uh, those of you who know Susan Shipanoff's blogs are superb. Mm -hmm. She's a retired professor of English and she just writes wonderful blogs. And uh, it's a source of very good information. Tom Mullen down south. So this will help you get yeah. on board with the sites. And one, just get into the one that I haven't heard yeah. yet is Valerie Harris and her yeah. email site. Anything that comes up. She's right. On, she sends emails at twelve o'clock at night. Yes. She's right on yes. top of it. Yes. I give them if anybody doesn't yes. have that website, that's that's the everybody funnels stuff through through Valerie. It's info north country car line at gmail dot com. Okay, you had that up for call. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I grabbed a, grabbed a few of these, hoping that maybe we could pass pass a few along. Um, so Bruce, well, what? Kind of numbers? I'll take 10. 10, yeah. Um, sorry, you had a question. Oh, I was just going to say, going along with what she said, that I think at this point the most important part is I go to school in King Hampshire, and like no one had a clue of what was going on. They had heard, kind of, sort of, but like I know that the colleges are really into getting involved in things like this. Yeah, but I know. But it's just lack of education, and when there's a meeting in Concord, mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of, like, woke everyone up, like, oh, what's going on? But I mean, like, as soon as you get south of the knot, it's kind of, like, What do you think you should do? I mean, anything, like, flyers. I know that we have Solar Fest every year, focusing on, like, um, not only local issues, but, like, ways to be sustainable, things like that. So, I mean, like, flyers, just the bumper stickers going down there, maybe, like, running something on the radio, like, because college kids, that's like the big thing to do with schools, is like, what can you do to help your area? So that's I mean, very anything, point. really. Yeah. Uh, as we go through the summer here, grass, grassroots, uh, it's interesting if you look at grassroots, they how they start and how they uh, sustain. Uh, over the summer, we're going to be careful. We're, we don't want to lose people. We don't want to lose our... Uh, uh, 
momentum. And so I think uh, you know even thinking things about thinking about a march, which logistically would perhaps be very difficult, but New Brunswick stopped Tiger Quebec with 4,000 people marching. Getting down, I'm really just beginning to wrap up. We're going to have to get that. What I'm concentrating on is the fall. But I really think it's important that every place you go, you wear your button. Because I think I absolutely agree with you that we've got to ramp up again in the fall. But we also, we must get these tourists that come up. I did Lilac Festival, the booth over at Lilac Festival, and then I was hanging around Sugar Hill to listen to what was going on there. People are coming up saying, oh, you mean these towers are above the trees? <laughs> yeah. You mean these towers are going through the towns? Yeah. They're getting, and, I, and I've been talking to people down in Concord, they are, the southern tier of New Hampshire is getting all sorts of wonderful glossy prints from Northeast Utilities, from PSNH, from whoever, whoever's funding it. They're getting incredible glossy materials that are saying, oh no, you won't be able to see the towers, you won't do this, you won't do that. Our tourists, whether they're coming from southern New Hampshire or whether they're coming from out of state, need to hear what's going on. They need to know that. You know, I wear my button to Concord only to cause trouble. <laughs> so people will ask questions. And I think it's important that they ask those questions if people know what's going on. So wear your button, and when the tourists ask you, where are the towers going to go? Tell them in your backyard. And yeah, oh yeah, it, oh they said that was NIMBY, you're right. And this is your backyard. Yeah. It is everyone's backyard. Just to remind me of one thing you saw this they said around, they had a myth and fact thing. Uh, the myth that I come out, for example, is what the towers are going to look like. They did not mention health. They didn't mention myth, childhood leukemia. Right. They right. didn't mention how can they come? And I would like to say some terminating, uh, what I would say is that the burden of proof is on them to prove that it does no harm. We don't need this, I mean, just, uh, we, we're not going to harm our kids. Uh, this is one of the slices in the pie. I have a concern about cancer survivors along the line. I think that they're out there. I've, I've spoken with a couple. Um, they're either getting cancer treatment or they're in remission um, or they're survivors. And I have a concern with these with these EMFs and how that could, you know, somehow there are, there are just work uh, directed at that, that um, particularly children too with cancer, that show that they feel they don't do so well. Um, but again, the, the science, remember that robust science that you need to say, you cite somebody with a stage four rectal cancer, 200 yards away from the line and they're going to die 50% faster than the next guy. We don't have that kind of, but we have good reason for concern. Anything about uh, the effect of EMFs on pacemakers? Stay away 50 feet. So if you had a pacemaker or a neurostimulator or one of those devices that you wouldn't, wouldn't want to get too near the line, they would stay back 50 feet. The EMF, the electromagnetic field, actually falls off very, after 500 feet, even though, despite the British study, it falls off very rapidly. So, we, so if you've got a pacemaker and your house is within that 500 feet, you know, what, should be cautious. Somewhat involved in the attempt to limit the landfill from expanding. Yeah. Um, I'm rather jaded that the elected representatives will do much of anything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I even finally got an opportunity to talk to the governor about it, and I handed him a paper that I wrote about financial responsibility. Uh, that's what I worked on. I worked on the financial security that this company has to present to the taxpayers of New Hampshire if there's a landfill failure. And it's a bond from uh, a company in Ohio that's not publicly traded, doesn't release financial information. Their main line of business is bail bonds. <laughs> they are owned by five weight it's owned, 70% uh, of this company is owned by four trash companies.